This video is about section 9.2, two means independent samples. We'll construct a hypothesis test about two population means. Say we have two populations, population one and population two, and we want to compare their population means, mu one and mu two. We'll pick a sample from each population. When the two samples are randomly selected and independent to each other, we call these two samples independent samples. So sometimes due to the purpose of the test, we want the two samples to be close related to each other, so it's easier to find the before and after effect. They're called dependent samples, which has matched pairs in it. For example, if you study twins, or uh, married couples, or uh, mother and daughter, this kind of tests are usually uh, matched pair tests because the samples you pick are closely related to each other. In uh, this section, 9.2, we'll talk about independent samples. And in the next section, 9.3, we'll talk about hypothesis test with matched pairs. The statistics you need from sample 1 are n1, which is the sample size for sample 1, x1 bar, which is the sample mean, and s1, which is the sample standard deviation. I'm talking about when the two samples are independent here. And the statistics you get from sample 2 are n1, uh, N2, uh, X2 bar, and S2. If you want to find the test statistic and the p-value by hand, you will have to use this formula to find the test statistic, which is T. Right? We know X1, X2, X1 bar, and X2 bar. Mu1 and Mu2, we'll assume they are equal, so this is always zero and we know S1, S2, and 1, and 2 from the two samples. And with that, you can calculate your t-value. And you can use the t-value chart to calculate your p-value, and then you can compare it with alpha and make a conclusion after that. That's what you do if you want to calculate using a formula. If you want to calculate your test statistic or p-value by using stat, stat crunch. Uh, what you need to know are these six values and with those uh, you can calculate your p-value and then compare to alpha and you will make a conclusion after that. This is a problem from our homework. A study has done on proctored and a non-proctored test. The results are shown in the table. Assume that the two samples are independent simple random samples selected from normally distributed populations and do not assume that the population standard deviations are equal. Compare, sorry, complete part A and part B. Use your significant level as 0.05 for both parts. Okay. Part A of this problem is to construct construct a hypothesis test. First, let's check the requirements. Uh, for a test like this, we need four requirements. The first one, the value of sigma 1 and sigma 2, which is the population standard deviation, are unknown. They are unknown. And we do not assume that they are equal. And it did say here, do not uh, assume the population standard deviations are equal. So satisfy the first requirement. Second requirement, the samples are independent. It did say here, the two samples are independent. Okay. And number three, both samples are random, simple random samples. It did say here, they are simple random samples. And number four, either or both of these conditions are satisfied.
The two sample sizes are both large. That means both are greater than 30. If you look at the sample sizes, they are, well, one is equal to 30. Well, the second, conditions is, second condition is both samples are coming from populations having normal distribution. We do satisfy the second um, condition in number four requirement. Uh, they are both from normally distributed populations. So uh, four of the requirements are satisfied. We can start the test. The claim of this problem is um, students taking non-proctored tests uh, get a higher mean score than those taking proctored tests. If you look at the chart, non-proctored is uh, mu2, right? Non-proctored uh, population mean is mu2. So the claim is your mu2 is greater than your mu1. Okay, so if you want to put mu1 first, it will be uh, mu1 is less than mu2. This is the claim. So based on the claim, we can find our non-hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis, where the non-hypothesis is the two means are equal. The alternative hypothesis is the same as the claim. So since all the sample values, sample statistics are given to us over here in the chart, I'll just use uh, StatCrunch. So let's go to StatCrunch. Under Stat, go to TSTAT. Okay, so we will be dealing with two samples. You can see two sample or paired. Uh, since those two are independent two samples, we will use two sample instead of paired. So with summary, so for our problem, the sample mean, for sample one, sample mean is 78.97. Sample standard deviation is 11.57. And the sample size is 30. For our second sample, sample 2, uh, sample mean is 81.83. Sample standard deviation is 22.35. And the sample size is 34. Four. All right, if you look at the underperform, you will choose hypothesis test, where for the not hypothesis is always mu1 minus mu2 equals zero. And for the alternative hypothesis, if you look at our claim, it's mu1 is less than mu2. That is equivalent to say that mu1 minus mu2 will be less than zero. Okay, so now click compute. So we have the values here, the t stat, the t value is negative six, uh, six, negative point, negative 0 0.653, and the p value is 0 0.2582. Okay, now that we have the p value, we can compare with your, our alpha, which is, says over here, 0 0.05, it's pretty obvious that our p-value is greater than uh, the 0 0.05, which tells us our sample stats uh, are not extreme enough for us to reject the non-hypothesis. So that we fail to reject the non-hypothesis, 
and there is not sufficient evidence to support H1, which in this case is mu1 is less than mu2, or you can say the student taking non-proctored tests uh, getting a higher score than those taking proctored tests. Okay, we don't have sufficient evidence to support that claim. And that will be the conclusion for this hypothesis test. Part B is asking us to construct a confidence interval. If you look at your alternative hypothesis, you can see this is going to be a left tilt test. That means if you draw a T distribution chart, your 0 0.05 is at the left tail over here, which is your alpha. But since we calculate our confidence interval by finding a point estimate first, which is x bar, I think in our case it might be x1 minus x2 bar. Anyway, finding a value in the middle first and then use that value to plus a margin of error and then minus a margin of error. It's kind of like constructing a two-tailed test. Well, we only have the left tail over here, but so we need to add a right tail here since it's a confidence interval. It's always two-tailed. All right, so in this case, your confidence level or C level will be 1 minus 0 0.05 times 2. Now you have to subtract the area of both tails, which is 0 0.9. So if you go back to your stack crunch, uh, for the part finding the confidence interval, you don't even have to change the problem. Just go to options, edit, and instead of hypothesis test, choose confidence interval. And the level, confidence level, will be 0 0.9 and compute. You have the lower limit and upper limit. And we, if we round to the nearest hundredth, the confidence interval is negative 10.19 to positive 4.47. Uh, since this, this confidence interval is used to estimate mu1 minus mu2, you can tell uh, 0 is in this interval. So that means it is possible that mu1 minus mu2 is equal to 0. So we can't reject the null hypothesis because this is the null hypothesis, right? Mu1 minus mu2 is equal to zero. So we fail to uh, reject the null hypothesis. And you make the same conclusion that there's not sufficient evidence to support our claim. If you see a problem of the data giving you are like a bunch of values like we're given data instead of summary uh, you probably pretty much go through the same procedure you open the data at a stat crunch and you go to stat at t stat and to sample but instead of with summary you click with data and that uh, sample one will be values from you know, the first column, and sample two will be from the second column, and depend on your test. Okay, I won't go through it here because I haven't read the problem. And you, then you go through the same procedure and compute. This is the end of this video. Let me know if you have other questions. Have a nice day.